Hey, what's up, everybody? Ryan here, and I'm standing by Kyle Elamite. Elam, how you doing, Kyle? Pretty good. How are you? I'm doing super good. Now, you play for Team Pure, and uh, you, you actually, you were just schooling me on a bunch of stuff in terms of the brackets. Do you mind actually talking to the folks at home and explaining how that works? Because looking at the board, it's just like there's like a billion teams and lines drawn between them, but you, you broke it down pretty simple as to how it worked out. Okay. You want yeah. to try it? There's uh, basically four pools. Each team does a round robin based on your win-loss record against each team that breaks down where you finish in your pool. The team that finishes first continues in winner's bracket, and the other losing teams enter into the tournament bracket from the loser's bracket. Wow. So, so you definitely want to try to get that first place. You get, if you finish first in your pool, you're guaranteed a top six finish. Wow. Outside of that, you enter in the loser's bracket, depending on how you play, anywhere from top 24 to top 12. Wow, All right, so getting back to you now, let's talk about yeah what you got going on, how are you guys doing, where do you guys sit in any of these brackets? Right now, we finished fourth in our bracket. Uh, we had a lot of close games, like lost just on the wire. Uh, the skill gap in Halo Reach isn't like it is in other games. So, you know, anybody has the potential to beat anybody. So we have a hard route for our, ourselves uh, coming through the loser's bracket, but we're looking confident, and, you know, when it's all on the line, you know, Balls to the wall, go yeah. hard, right? Now, 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 for folks at home that don't know, you've actually been around in the MLG for a while. You used to play with T-Squared, you were saying. You want to tell us a little bit about the history that you have with the MLG? Yeah, I've been playing since 2005 when I went to my first event. Uh, my second year, I started improving my placements. I, used to, I started off as a nobody fanboy type thing. Uh, I won my first tournament a year after I started playing, and I've won seven events. I've been on straight ripping and instincts to both win. And I'm also the U.S. champion, which was a huge free-for-all tournament in Halo 3 uh, for 50 grand. It was across the whole country, and I was winner of that as well. I, I'm sure I've heard them talk about you a few times. I just didn't know you. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, so you've obviously been to a ton of these. MLG Orlando 2011. I saw you watching that screen pretty closely. Who are you looking for? Who are you going up against? What's the deal with your bracket and where you're at in terms of what the rest of the night? Let's see. We go up against next. We play uh, Carbon, mm -hmm. and then. Continuing on that, we're going to end up playing Classic and Status Quo, uh, depending on how we do. Uh, Status Quo is my little brother's team, actually, so it's a little brotherly love match going on. Uh, and basically, we're playing getting a couple hours. Uh, are they? Is your brother's team pretty good or what? Uh, they actually won the first event of the season. They're the second-ranked team, so they're definitely a really good team. Oh, like, so that's some extra pressure, right? Yeah, it's Can't definitely. Yeah, I mean, we we love playing against each other. Yeah. You know, we've been competitive all growing up, uh, even before Halo and video games were involved. Super awesome. Now, uh, is, is there a chance in this way the bracket's laid out that you might face your old teammate, T Squared? Let's see. Uh, if we if we end up face, facing each other again, it will be for top six or top four. So both of our teams have to perform, show up, and do really well. But there is a chance we will play each other again. Now, what about Bravo's obviously in the coaching position this time? What about him, Andy, and the rest of his team? Are you looking to face them too, or? Uh, Final Boss, I heard they're doing really well this event. They took Instinct to Game 5. Um, so I would love to play them. You know, I love playing against everybody, and uh, my mindset has always been you got to beat everybody to win. So, you know, it doesn't matter who it is. I just, I just love to play. All right, so I've seen enough professional Halo matches to know it's all about being really good with the sniper rifle, right? <laughs> I mean, that's a huge part of it. But there's generally one, maybe two snipers on a map. So gener generally, each team will have a designated sniper who's someone who excels more than the others with the weapon. So you know, every team every team has one, and each people can go take turns going off. Uh, there's so much skill involved in the community, so that there's just tons of great snipers. How how you know how strict do you guys stick to your gameplay strategy going into a match? Like, do you have it in your head exactly how it's going to go out, and then the coach kind of like you know calls audibles during the match? Is that how it works? Uh, well, coaching is more. For most coaches, it's just weapon times, making sure everyone's remembering uh, the game clock because people tend to zone out. So they'll time the weapons and make sure somebody, sometimes they'll catch someone off doing their own thing who's not paying attention and help out with that. But uh, outside of that, uh, the players like, or myself, will I will like focus on making sure everyone's on the same page. How, how important is time management in that round? Is it like extremely important? Yeah, I mean, Halo. each Halo has revolved a ton on the weapons. Uh, you want to get an advantage on the other team whether it's map control or power weapons. So power weapons are on a spawn time cycle. They'll come up every two to three minutes, depending on which weapon it is. So you always want to be moving around the map to grab that power weapon and use it to your advantage. Very awesome. All right, so, and then in terms of like time-saving techniques, the one thing that I can see that people still do to this day, especially when they're doing, a, so in CTF, they're still doing the, the hopping and throwing the flag in front of them because you just move faster, straight up, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the faster you can flag, cap the flag, uh, the less time the other team has to make some kind of play to stop it. 
All right, so what, what else should we know about whether tonight or tomorrow in terms of this event? Like, uh, anything? Are you just totally focused on what you're doing with Halo? Do you even know that Call of Duty and StarCraft 2 is here? I actually am a big StarCraft 2 fan, so I, I'm watching it. Every time I'm walking to the venue, I'm staring at the screen. I'm like, oh, he's playing, he's playing. But at the same time, you know, I'm here for Halo. Got to focus and take every match one at a time. The second you overlook a team is the second they come out and can beat you. All right, anything you want to say to the folks watching at home? Uh, you know, come check out an MLG event if it comes to your city, and uh, shout out to the fans. Cool deal, Kyle. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.